Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Lunch Table Podcast with Dylan and Akron. We hope that you guys had a wonderful holiday for July 4th. Uh, in the spirit of that, we are reviewing uh, Terminal List, which is a new series on Amazon Prime starring Chris Pratt. So we're trying to branch out and look at other shows uh, on our list for since summer's uh, coming to a close. We want to watch other stuff, too. Uh, but I, I, for the most part, it was a good show. Uh, Akram, how did you feel about it? Yeah, well, first of all, I want to say happy 4th of July or belated happy 4th of July to everybody. And I also want to say uh, to our veterans out there, thank you so much for your service. We greatly thank appreciate you. So you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, this was basically a Jason Bourne spinoff, kind of, right? No? Uh, it was really cool, though. I think, man, Chris Pratt, he really, you know, he's so authentic when he's holding uh, his rifle. Um, and just the techniques they use. So I felt like the show was really authentic. And plus, it was written by Jack Carr. And Jack Carr is a Navy SEAL. Um, so I thought it was okay. Um, I didn't think it, it blew me out of the water. But I don't think it also deserves like to be kind of review bombed. Because right now, it sits at a 34% on Rotten Tomatoes. I feel like it probably was review bombed because like the current political climate. Um, and a lot of like different uh, shows that we have reviewed in the past, too, has been reviewed bombed. So I feel like that, you know, that kind of sucks. It's kind of like a way to control like art. Um, but uh, I the way how it ended, I don't think there's going to be another season anyway. But I like the show. I, I really did. I think I, I, I really like the show for what it is. So let's just get right into it. Yeah, well, um, yeah, I, I don't think it deserved the hate, honestly. Uh, did I feel it was an original like concept? Uh, no, I feel mm. like we've seen other projects uh, like this, like. Or even like in in film too, like like Shooter or American Sniper or something. Like the series, so much, so much reminded me of um the first season of The Punisher, honestly, because the yeah. plot was it was so similar. But it it differs in in many regards as well. And I think uh Chris Pratt, this is really like the role that I I respect him more now as an actor, uh just because like uh, he he's been in so many different roles over the years, and he's kind of like transforming his his uh, acting style now like he's being more typecasted as like this kind of like uh like lee like action kind of guy and actually i think it's working out i I actually liked him more in this show than i've seen him in like other projects where he's kind of like this like goofy like i don't know like romantic guy but i feel like he brings such a, a genuine like reaction from this character uh especially from a character that's gone through so much like pain and suffering and the supporting cast, I, I felt like didn't feel like they were just there just to be like, you know, background characters. I feel like they actually were like were like a support unit because this feels like very like like it's like I love like how they respect so much of like the military culture without it being too like preachy or like, you know, like patriotic like propagandism. Um, so we follow this this uh, this uh, Navy SEAL commander, uh, James Reese and uh the first episode starts off with uh, with a failed mission in uh, in Syria, where they're trying to capture this uh, this Syrian um, chemical weapons scientist, and it just uh, basically like a, if you've ever seen movies or shows like these, like it's a big setup basically. So the the operation fails, and he's kind of like the the fall guy, uh, where they kind of just like um, pin the pin the failures on him, and then like you know sh- uh, shit starts going sideways, and then he's like he's losing friends and family. And eventually he does uh, lose his his wife and kids, uh, which is a really like a shocking moment. I didn't expect that to happen. Um, but that's also kind of why it reminded me of The Punisher a lot, too. Um, just like this this person going through such a like a tragedy and that kind of like transforms him in a way um, from just like this caring father to like this kind of like vigilante, this cold hearted person. Um, but uh, tell me, like, uh, what did you think of like Pratt's performance in this show? Oh, it was so authentic. Yeah. I mean, the guy has range. I, I think he brought it here. Um, there's so many like emotions going on, right, with this character. Um, hate, you know, he wants revenge, um, but also so much sorrow. And he's a sick person as well. So I really felt like he did a phenomenal job because how can you like go down this path and be sick at the same time? Um, and basically, you know, revenge is kind of like an endless loop. So I feel like this 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 performance that he gave um, went hand in hand um, with everyone else's because everyone else, again, was was wonderful. 
Um, and yeah, they didn't feel like they were just side characters. But I think Chris Pratt, for sure, obviously he's the main character, but he was a notable highlight in a sense because everybody else seemed like a notable highlight. They were really good. Um, but he had so much going on, and I think he nailed it. Yeah, yeah and I think the best part about his character, uh, we were talking a little bit um, earlier, it was kind of like he felt like an unreliable narrator in a way yeah. because uh, he he had a physical ailment, and there's like there were certain times where like we didn't know if like he was actually like telling the truth or is like is like the world around him actually like affecting like like what's going on so i thought that was an inter- interesting like like little twist because um it also talks a lot about like you know ptsd and like you know what veterans go through like like bringing the war back home basically so it's like i i thought that was a really like like subtle way to like really touch on those kind of like deeper deeper motifs Oh, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, I thought it was it, honestly. That was wonderful. Um, <clears throat> I'd say I wanted to ask you, actually, uh, right off the bat, how did you feel like how did you feel about the betrayals here? Were they like like did they seem too tropey to you or were like they well set up enough to differentiate themselves from like different uh, properties? Uh, for me, it's 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 kind of predictable when you watch so many like stories like this like it's definitely feels like a like a robert ludlum or like a tom clancy thing where it's like yeah. oh, okay like he's obviously somebody's like working on the inside uh against him but um but there there was some cool like twists and turns and i, I love um uh constance Wu's character also because she didn't feel like like this kind of like corny like character <laughs> that just wants like a good story like she is actually like supportive of him in a way and she and like she really is like she's kind of like his um i don't know there's always like that trope of like uh like i I always think of like 24 when um kiefer sutherland has like i forgot the girl's name she's like the hacker girl right she's like like feeding him intel and stuff so it's it's kind of cool i I like the relationship a lot um yeah yeah how did you feel about the brother because uh i haven't seen the actor since uh, battleship (laughs) but yeah he's in a lot of movies now like like uh like military related stuff Yeah, that's the funny thing. He's, like, in a lot of, like, military things. Um, Yeah, I love that guy. I love Taylor Kitsch. Um, He was actually in uh, True Detective Season 2, so I loved him there, too. I think he was a veteran. He's always, like, a veteran somewhere. Um, I don't know if I should, like, give spoilers now, but, uh, yeah, I thought he was a really fun character, too. He's, like, very free, and, like, I think he's, like, a ride-or-die type of homie until we figure out in the end that, you know, what happened happened, and it kind of sucks. I always I always love his performances though Taylor Kitsch I thought he was really cool um, uh, and we also see Patrick Schwarzenegger here as well you know Arnold Schwarzenegger's son um, briefly though uh, he has like more prominent roles in like for example the, sh- the HBO Max show The Staircase um, but there was a lot of like like A listers here as well um, which I was really surprised a lot of people died like they did not last for too long um, we also have J- Sean Gunn uh, in this in this show as well which. Uh, Kudos to him. I felt like we don't really see Sean Gunn in like a, diff- a lot of different roles. That's kind of like the man or something or up there at least. And of course, we have Jai Courtney. Uh, Jai Courtney now is kind of like playing like the same characters, though, I'd say. Like, I hope he doesn't become a Jason Statham. Um, Wasn't he in that one episode of Love, Death and Robots with the military people? Yeah, he was too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jai I'm Courtney. getting like typecasted now, but <laughs> kind of. he was like Captain Boomerang in this for some reason. Captain Boomerang. Oh, yeah, no, kind of. Yeah. And he, obviously he was also in Terminator Genesis playing Kyle Reese, but he was cool here too. I thought, I thought he was really going to be the main villain through the whole show. I thought, oh, this is the guy. But then Chris, like James Reese keeps killing people off and it's like, oh, he's not the main villain. And then he kills another person. Oh, that guy's not the main villain. Right. Um, so I wanted to know, how did you feel about the whole arc of like him crossing people off the list? Did you enjoy it? Did you think it was like kind of fun to see different mission sets and like yeah, weapon I mean, loadouts? It's a, it's a, it's a true story about revenge and kind of like a psychotic breakdown almost. So it's like yeah. losing your humanity slowly because you've gone through this, this travesty where it's like, you have nothing left to lose. And he even said that too. He's like, I have nothing left to lose. So if I, if I die, at least I'll die knowing that I tried avenging my family. But yeah, I thought I thought uh, uh, Steve Horn was gonna be the the final villain. So he felt so much like a fucking like Billy Russo character too. <laughs> it, it was so similar to the Punisher, man. The, the really parallels, to, like like if I hadn't watched the Punisher before this show, I probably would have appreciated this show more. 
but because yeah. I watched it, it just feels like like even like um, what's her name um, uh, Katie the the journalist. She felt like so much like a Madani character, <laughs> kind of right. Yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah. I, I mean overall, no, I, I think like it wasn't bad. It's just like it just feels tropey in that way. But that doesn't make it a bad series, um, because it has its own like flavor, I guess. Oh yeah. Like uh, like the characters just felt genuine. I felt like if at first. Like, it just felt a little too convenient that everybody he knows has what he needs. Like, his sister-in-law right. is, like, a pilot. His brother-in-law or his, his brother works for the CIA. So, it just felt, like, a little too convenient at times for me. Because, yeah. like, if like if, if anybody else played this character, it's, like, they wouldn't have, like, as much access to that much resources. Mm-hmm. Um, but I had to suspend my disbelief for that. But I, I think the, the, the weaving of the plot uh, was at, at a nice pace. I felt like the episode's... We're just a little too long for me. I don't know how you felt about like like the the runtime for for these episodes. Um, Sometimes just, they dragged on a little too much, and I feel like they they use um, flashback sequences a little too consistently, where it, it kind of was like too distracting from the main plot. Yeah. Um, uh, although I I must say like sometimes the flashbacks for me they kind of work because he was. He was visioning them because of the tumor. Because, uh, yeah, so he, yeah, yeah, so he has a tumor in his head from this uh, drug that they um, gave to these uh, seals, and it kind of set them up. Um, so, like, it kind of matched sometimes. I felt like for you to get really get in the show, episode one wasn't like that catching for me. Episode two was was getting there a lot, and I think that's when I got yeah, hooked. Like, I like, agree. Yeah, yeah, like it was kind of slow for me in the beginning, and then one night, once I got to like episode. Uh, I don't know if it was two or three where like he's in the the MRI room and right. the assassins come in. Yeah. It started like picking up a little bit because like I even like 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 uh, I'm sure you'll appreciate like how like like well trained Chris Pratt was for this role. I feel like he was definitely like at the top of his game, especially oh, if you're yeah. a SEAL too. You kind of have to like respect them in that way, just with how like efficient you have to be. Oh yeah, he was so good. That shoulder swap later on, like I think in the last episode, was so smooth. I feel like Butcher when he was talking to uh, what's his name, Gunpowder, so smooth, so smooth. <laughs> it was really good. Yeah, you know, he was so efficient with that rifle. I think for all you gun nuts out there, I think he was using like a Bravo Company M4 without the front post. Um, I believe at least um, an aim point reticle. Uh, that was that man. And I think you know what's funny is like a lot of people say this this show was gun centric. I don't think it was. Gun- it's a revenge story. I, I really, you know, the guns are the tools kind of, but it wasn't like the center focus. Like it wasn't there wasn't really a lot of talk about like the guns. He was just using them as like a tool, you know, and I mean, he's very same could be said for the Punisher as well. It's, like, yeah, exactly. it's such a gun centric show. But I mean, if right. that's if that's your because there's obviously a demographic for this yeah. kind of show, uh, whether you're like a military like fanatic or you just like enjoy like military like stories in general. Right. But I think it can be appreciated by 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 different audiences as well. Exactly, because I was when I was watching this, I thought when I first seen an article and it said like uh, Chris Pratt is like something funny. It was like Chris Pratt's a gun toting maniac, whatever. I was like, yeah, but the rest of the show, there's so much dialogue and there's so much like things revealed. And like, that's why it kind of like it, it brings me back kind of to like Jason Bourne or something. But it wasn't like just about the guns. Like there were certain missions that he like there's maybe did. like three episodes where he's actually doing like like gunship. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And there's like a lot of like planning and stuff, which I appreciate it. And and going back to like the side characters just being like kind of convenient, they were. I'm kind of glad that like some had their little quirk, like the pilot played by Tyner Rushing, um, Liz Riley, um, that she was in the military as a helicopter pilot. Um, so they kind of like showed how is it believable, I guess, even though if it's still kind of convenient, it's you know, it's still there. I think everyone did great. Um, I felt like towards the ending, when we got to Lorraine Hartley, um, everything popped off. And I think Constant Wu, like, at, like her, her acting was like brilliant there, especially towards the end. And, and everybody like it was there was so much physical acting and Chris Pratt was doing like a great job. And then also there was so much like acting in the face. You know, there was so many like close ups. And I think Constant Wu was so great trying to reveal the truth. And it makes me wonder. Um, it kind of brings up that that question like um you know an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind and and can you really fight the system legally or do you have to be kind of like the punisher and kill people so i want to know what you think do you think like it was kind of like 
in an ideal like world or like just a realistic setting. I think do you the think... fact that that Reese had an ailment kind of like diluted the whole really? legitimacy of his revenge. Oh, okay. I don't know, cause like I I can understand like like him like wanting to avenge his you know his mm-hmm. wife and kids, cause like it's true. It's like why did they have to die? Just so that these people could, you know, sell this this drug to the military, right? So it's kind of stupid in that way. But towards the end, like, I don't know, I felt like his need for to satisfy his revenge just didn't stop. And you could see that, like, with the brother, he was kind of like like questioning his motives a bit. Like, like a uh, constant Wu's character was kind of like questioning it too. Like, like when does this end, right? Because it's like he already, he by like the fourth or fifth episode, he'd already killed like the trigger man. He'd already killed uh jack courtney's character which is like the big bad guy already but then it's like it's like revealed that like this goes so much deeper mm-hmm. but then it's like does he have to shoulder that obligation like why like can you just leave that to well then again it's like it's like like you said too it's like there's so much corruption at at every level and we saw that with um you know hartley's character too it's like like you really have to like take out everybody then at that point, yeah. like if you want like true justice, you're gonna have to take out everybody. But at that point, I think I feel like it's just like he just there was nothing left for him to do but just like kill people. It's like he just kind of like lost sight of like why he was doing this in the first place. I don't know how you felt about it, but I feel like mm-hmm. his his motives just kind of like in itself kind of became corrupted too. Yeah, for know. sure. I I think the bird we seen the bird crash into the window. How I perceived that was that the bird was basically um like a metaphor for him and he can never like go back to those like happy times or that peaceful time um and the bird just was dead the bird just crashed into the window and died and and obviously the way how this show ended um it kind of seems like it's going to go down that path as well so it's a very tragic story it's it's not like a very like like gun ho and then there you go i did my mission and now i'm going going to be safe right. it, it was a tragic story since the very start honestly um so what did you think that that was that metaphor though with the bird it was that a lot a of things i was a little confused about it at first i like i like you said i thought it was just like a thing about just like reminiscing about his his past life and how he can't go back to that mm. but as you watch the story progress it could hold so many more meanings like for me, I, at first, I thought maybe it's like like the crack in the glass was like maybe like a bullet hole, mm-hmm. and he's kind of like thinking about you know all the shit that happened with with uh, Operation Odin Sword, but then it's like when now that I'm thinking about it, it's like maybe the crack represents like the tumor. Also, it's like Ooh. his uh his psyche, but also his soul is kind of like cracking in a way too, and then maybe yeah. he's like he, he's the bird also. Yeah. So it's like I don't know that it. it it's inter- it's interesting to put something that metaphoric into such like a like a military like story kind of like that. I thought it was really interesting though, and then, and I also like the motif of like him having the the list uh, with the names on. It was so much like reminiscent of like Kill Bill. Like he's mm-hmm. the list just keeps getting bigger and bigger. But at some point, it goes off the page, and then he's just like I said, he's gonna have to like go for bigger fish uh, after that point. But it's it's funny that it was just on the back of that drawing that his child made so it's like like that paper kind of makes me think of like him in a way it's like one half of him still remembers like his his family but the other other side is just like he's like a kind of like a cold killer in a way and that's why i think the show didn't deserve like the rotten tomato score because there, there's a lot they, there's a lot of things that was like way deeper than people first perceive from the trailers and stuff like that usually trailers are like action-packed this show was for sure action-packed but there was a lot more um, it, it really questioned a lot of people's motives. And, and one of the person's um, motives was actually brother Ben Edwards, right? Played by Taylor Kitsch. Um, so it was revealed that he was the one that kind of set up like this thing in the beginning of the show. In, in true CIA fashion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And he was paid like a, this amount of money, whatever, like probably like 25 million or something. Um, and so he was very remorseful, like figuring out that they actually would end up killing, uh, the child, uh, and, and the wife of James Reese. And so now that's why he kind of embarked on his journey with James Reese and basically did anything that James Reese said just to, uh, uh, exact that revenge. So I wanted to, to know your, your feelings, uh, towards that revelation 
And also, how did you feel about the outcome that happened? I mean, like, I, I like when you make a character that like close to the protagonist, it kind of like it's almost a dead giveaway that there's gonna be like a betrayal like towards the end. Like, that's why like he kind of made me think of like Billy Russo too. Yeah, it's like he he was helping him towards the end, but eventually like he probably has like uh, bigger ambitions. So I wasn't too surprised by the betrayal. Um, I do wonder though what's gonna happen to Therese towards the end. I mean, a lot of shit happened, and also like we did, forgot to talk about like J D. Pardo's character too. Like he kind of like has a change of heart. Oh like, yeah, towards the end, and he's kind of like on uh, on Reese's side of it. So it's like this this show talks about like so many perspectives being like uh suddenly transformed uh because so much shit is happening and once you put shit in the limelight it's like okay well now things that i thought were true are are suddenly like it makes me question like my purpose right right especially like with uh you know so many characters like uh like katie like now she's kind of like like reconsidering like what her her role as a journalist is um, yeah. Because she's become so involved in this in this scandal, and like, I mean, she has like a war correspondent too, so she's seen like action, but like this goes so much deeper. So, yeah, overall, I I I thought the series like it was it wasn't too original, but it still felt different. Um, I, I honestly I would give it an eight out of ten uh, as far as like acting performances. Um, but how how would you uh, summarize your feelings for this show? Yeah, for sure. I think that the show, like you said, is it it's a different type of flavor from those type of espionage and like war type of uh, shows or movies. Um, I felt like everyone's performances, as we said before, were they, they brought their game to it. Um, and I feel like it's going to be memorable. I don't see this like really having a uh, having a second season uh, just due to the fact that, you know, James Reese has has brain cancer. He has a tumor. Um, and also, I'm not like really familiar with the Jack Carr's like novels. I don't know if there's like another sequel to Terminal List. I mean, and again, it, the the name is Terminal List. It kind of feels like it's like a a one off thing. Um, but I'm glad that it had a deeper meaning uh, under all the action, and I'm glad that it was so raw as it was, and and it went down there. And everyone like the stunt team, everybody like I think they were really authentic, and I think. I think a lot of people, especially like, you know, people in the military family and stuff like that, or just fans will, will greatly appreciate it. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like this is really like Chris Pratt's true breakout role. Honestly, like I would love to see him in more projects like that, just cause like his performance made me felt like, so like depressed, <laughs> not, not like in a sad <laughs> yeah, way, but like, I, know, I just felt like so much pain. Like, cause every time, like, he went through so much like I felt it like it was like I was actually like seeing what this character was going through and it didn't feel like overacting in a way. So I I, I like that Chris Pratt is kind of like breaking his his typecast a bit and going deeper into more damaged characters than these kind of like more co- comedic roles. But oh, I, sure. I enjoy the series overall. Um, but wrap up your thoughts uh with this review for us yeah chris pratt great job everybody else really good job uh dm <laughs> us or just share this if you see it if you if you guys made it to end and chris pratt if you made it to end please uh <laughs> drop a like and check out some of our playlists uh we're currently reviewing miss marvel which is going to end soon and the boys unfortunately is going to end soon this week of this recording uh so check out our playlist we just wrapped up obi-wan kenobi as well so if you're new to this channel we do movie reviews tv show reviews and a couple of other things along the way such as reactions predictions and whatnot it's we have a lot of fun here in the channel we hope that you guys uh check us out um and you could also check us out in our social channels uh we have instagram check us out at the lunch table we have uh you listen you can listen to us wherever you listen to podcasts like apple Podcasts, spotify anchor and, and we're expanding too we're, we're trying expanding. to get on uh, other platforms like radio public uh overcast so we're trying to broaden our range for you guys so yeah so if you follow us uh we'll we'll keep you updated uh we have a tiktok uh we have so many other platforms you can you can really reach out and please please uh comment below or give us your feedback on how we're doing um because we we love to let this channel evolve and uh life finds a way i guess yeah but no porn dms because that shit sometimes somebody's dropping a leak for like a porn site i'm not getting a virus because of you (laughs) so go away we're not that type of channel right unfortunately (laughs) But thank you again. Um, Please leave a like, uh, comment, and share this if you enjoyed it. Um, But until then, guys, uh, thank you for having lunch with us.
See you guys.